Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So having a quick look at the US markets, you can see that we're following up Friday's uh, negative day with another move lower this morning, back down towards potential support at 17,747. Uh, not much kind of news-wise over the weekend. I guess you've got the fact that the uh, the Chinese Yuan is uh, is maybe uh, going to be of some interest to some traders today. The IMF are about to uh, do a vote later in today's session um, to decide if it should be part of a basket of currencies that it utilizes uh, for a lot of its investments, which could uh, put the yuan back into some serious demand. Now, looking over again at the Chinese market, the Chinese stock markets, I think, are just ever so slightly uh, on, the, on the back foot still, uh, following on from, from last week's heavy losses. Um, basically, as the Chinese regulator is looking to um, clamp down on a lot of erroneous kind of trading practices, they're trying to... Uh, trying to keep the volatility out of the out of those kind of markets. So you might be restricting the ability to uh, to trade with so much margin, for example. And basically, their take on it is unscrupulous business pack, pack, uh, practices or high frequency trading. They're trying to put a stop to that. So that's causing a little bit of pressure on those markets as, a, as some turnover might be taken out of the market in that regard. Some liquidity might get removed uh, as well. So uh, those markets not reacting that well. US, however, if you look here back in uh, the start of November, we had a slightly higher high. Now we've got a lower high. Uh, forming right here. So any break below 17,747 would also break below the 21 period SMA and that would open up 17,561. Looking at the UK market, uh, negative day again on Friday, off the session lows. It's not doing a huge amount today. If I look at my intraday charts on my other screen, most equity markets, Germany 30 in particular, completely flatlined. So not much to talk about there, unfortunately, at the moment. Commodities seem to be slightly pressured right now, looking at gold and crude. We'll come back to that in a second. So then have a look at Japan 225, uh, negative day on Friday, another negative day today. Um, we're a little bit away from that 21 period SMA, 20,087, <coughs> still to play for longer term. Looking at dollar yen, uh, dollar yen's flatlining a little bit as well, to be fair. So this week we do have the ECB session, uh, which is going to be on Thursday, uh, and that's going to give you a decent, a decent flavour as to uh, are you going to cut rates or not in, uh, in the eurozone, and are they going to embark on more quantitative easing, basically. So the euro is going to be kind of, kind of interesting. You've got the US, there, you've got the, the US dollar. Uh, it's still going to be slightly ramped up by the prospect of a rise in interest rates in December. So that FOMC meeting is due in the next couple of weeks, and that gives you a bit of an idea of where we are. So the uh, dollar-yen can st trading between two ranges, closer to 121, spot 87, than 124, uh, but that's where it is right now. Moving on to West Texas crude, uh, moving lower again, $42, seemingly too difficult for it to break through. So uh, quite a negative day on Friday. We're at the bottom end of this range so far this morning, but it's hardly moved that much relative to the other candles anyway. Um, you could have the next potential short-term support around about 39 and change. So the yellow metal per gold. Gold had a pretty bad day there on Friday, um, as we obviously get closer to that uh, FOMC meeting about interest rates. <coughs> we smashed through uh, 1,064. <coughs> Let me just go onto my weekly chart here so we can see where the next potential support is. Uh, and we have to go quite far back, I think, to, to, to get it. I'll be looking around about here, tip of that candle. So around about uh, 10.42 is going to be the next potential support. And as you can see, we're a little bit away from there just now. Uh, we're past the halfway point, incidentally, but uh, $1,042 is the next potential support level for gold. And if we break that, I guess a lot of people will be asking, will it break 1000 so looking at euro dollar slowly grinding lower as ever towards one spot zero five twenty four, and I guess what a lot of traders are asking is parity on the cards for euro dollar. Um, they're going to be cutting rates, which kind of seems to be mainly almost priced in at the moment, uh, and obviously with the U.S. looking to raise rates, it seems to be the perfect storm for euro dollar. Uh, looking at the euro against sterling, it's down around about one spot seventy and change. Um, but certainly versus the US dollar, it looks like that one spot zero five twenty four. That's going to be the next potential support, and you could probably argue that you've got another last bastion support in about one spot zero four fifty six. 
So finishing up with cable, uh, cable slightly pressured as well, uh, bouncing off one spot 5027. Uh, we hit that level on Friday just about. We're out there again today, looking at my interday day charts. It's, it's kind of bouncing off there just now, but it's not bouncing with any rigor, which means that we, that one spot 5027 uh, might be quite difficult for it to hold. Uh, if there's pressure there, we'll have a look at the macro data to finish things off. Failing that, one spot 48, uh, 59 could be the next level to have a look at. So macro data wise, what do we still have left? We've got uh, German CPI at 1 p.m. UK time. Then we've got the housing index in the US at three. And then if we go on to Tuesday, we've got Chinese PMI, you've got Eurozone PMI uh, from, from market serve in the UK as well, unemployment data from the Eurozone and PMI and domestic all, all industry sales on the Tuesday, the 1st of December. So as ever, guys, keep your eye on the chart forum. Make insights part of your lake going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.